everybody, it's me, Alexa, and today we're going to be talking about Bahubali, the beginning and the conclusion. I was gonna do two separate reviews for these movies, since they are, of course, two films, but as I was trying to work out what I should say about them, I realized that a lot of what I had to say was overlapping between the two, and I'd constantly be referencing the other movie in it, so I thought it might be best to just make one whole big one. The film is written and directed by S.S. Rajamouli, of course, um, and it stars Prabhas, Anushka Shetty, um, Rana Dagupati, Tamana, Ramya Krishnan, and Satya Raj, uh, and many other, many other amazingly talented people. So this is going to be a spoiler review because I can't think of ways to talk about this movie adequately without talking about spoilers. Um, I will give my final overall thoughts and shark rating, and once I start doing that, I won't say any more spoilers. So if you have not seen the movie, are debating watching it, want to know if you should. Well, firstly, you should. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. But if you want to hear a little bit more to convince you of it, skip ahead to the timestamp on screen where I'll start my overall thoughts, shark rating, and go into my outro. Uh, there'll be no spoilers past the timestamp on the screen. So as many of you may already know, my very first Indian film was actually Bahubali The Beginning way back in May of 2018. Um, so it's been a long time now, it's been two and a half years since then. Crazy. <laughs> but, uh, so then later that same year I watched The Conclusion. I watched a few other Indian films in between. Um, I'd actually watched the first movie on a flight, like I had a really long flight, and so that's where I watched it. And so that wasn't the most optimal way to watch it, I will say, on a small screen with, like, airplane all around you, yeah, I don't know. It wasn't the best. Um, so I did not fall in love with it as much as I wanted to. And then I watched the sequel, and I still really liked the sequel, but again, I wasn't super, like, in love with it like so many people seem to be. I loved the film, it was great, but I wasn't, like, I didn't think it was anything that spectacular, to say it like that. And so... Then, <laughs> I did rewatch the first movie earlier this year, and I enjoyed it more, but I was still a little iffy. This past weekend, though, I watched both Bahubali 1 and 2. Um, I did some movie commentaries for it. Those will be coming public in a few weeks um, on here. They're available now exclusively on our Patreon if you want to go over and check that out. So this was the first time I sat down, watched I had the screen right in front of me, and I just fully was engaged with it. No distractions, nothing to like make me pause and all that. Um, only pause during intermissions for break, <laughs> but, and it was always very quick. And so I got, was able to fully immerse myself in the story. And wow, <laughs> just wow. I mean, truly the experience was incredible. Watching them, I watched one on Friday and one on Saturday and it was just, it was moving, honestly. I almost cried when I watched the sequel. I felt true anger. Um, like, it was so emotional and so well done, and I was able to pick up on all those small things in it that I like picking up on, and it was just, it was so good. Bahubali 2 is officially on my list of favorite films. Um, <laughs> so... I liked it quite a bit. <laughs> like favorite films of all time across all industries, just favorite films. It's on there now. I also though actually really quick want to preface the fact I was able to watch the beginning in Telugu with subtitles, but very sadly, Bahubali 2 the conclusion is not available anywhere in Telugu. I found it in low quality on the Ian Thuzan website, which is like my last resort for Indian films. And it didn't have subtitles, and <laughs> so I was like, okay, so I ended up having to watch the conclusion in Tamil. I was really disappointed, I was like going for everywhere, I'm like, I will pay money to watch this movie, and there's just nowhere. Nowhere could I like give them money to watch it. I wish I could, it's not even like Prime, it says it's not available in your country, and it doesn't even have the Telugu one. Like it only has Malayalam, Tamil, and Hindi, and I'm like, how are you gonna have three languages and not have the main one that it was filmed in? But anyways, um, <laughs> so I ended up just having to watch it in Tamil, which I don't think detracted much from it because of the fact that I am reading subtitles anyways. Um, it's not a huge impact, but I do wish I could hear the original voice acting for every character because that's why I like doing the original languages. But I think the dubs all gave really great performances themselves, so it never felt like to me that it took away from the movie. I know that the lyrics were slightly different in songs and like some wording I'm sure changed throughout, you know, as they you know, switch it to another language, it gets slightly changed how it's said, just like how subtitles are slightly different than what they're actually saying, etc. 
Um, but overall, I, I think it was still really good. All right, there's all my prefaces. Now let's get into the actual juicy stuff. So of course, the story starts with the character Sivagami, who we don't know yet, coming out from a waterfall, carrying one little baby Prabhas um, <laughs> out uh, to safety. And uh, we'll talk a bit more about that scene later on, but I it's such a beautiful way to start a movie. And then you have Mahendra Bahubali, that's the son of Amarendra Bahubali, and those are who our story uh, circulates around. We have the first bit we set to learn about the son, Mahendra Bahubali, and then we get to learn uh, some through flashback um, about his father, Amarendra Bahubali. And that continues on to the sequel where we start actually with the flashback and then it comes back to present day and we're able to get the conclusion. <laughs> and so it's really cool because it's all, it is like two different stories because you have the present day and the flashback and the beginning shows you the beginning of present day, the beginning of flashback, then the conclusion shows you the conclusion of flashback and the conclusion of present day. And so I really love the smartness in that, the storytelling, because he could have easily made it two movies, one with just the, you know, flashback and then the next one with the present day, but it wouldn't have had as much as of an impact if it was told in that order. Um, having the mixture of the two stories so that they intertwine with each other allows it to amplify the messages and the meanings and the emotions of the characters because we're able to like learn it alongside them. So to break it down to its simplest baseline a storyline, um, it is about the character of Mahendra Bahubali played by Prabhas who is the son of Amarendra Bahubali also played by Prabhas. Um, he has been grown up in a village outside of the kingdom of Mahishmati where he is rightfully the king. It's his journey of getting back to his kingdom and setting it right, setting everything right that had gone wrong uh, during his father's time. If you've seen the movie, you know the story really well, so I'm not gonna go too much into the specifics. Um, I will get into more of it as I discuss the different techniques and how they work with the story. Um, but overall, I think that the story is extremely compelling and everything about it builds onto each other and the pacing and like the way that it's told, the order, because it's like non-linear, I think all works really well to get you to the exact emotions you need to be at for all these final moments, like all the final scenes at the end of the conclusion. So one thing that really amplified the writing was the truly phenomenal performances from everyone involved. And I think part of that does have to go to Raja Muli because he is a wonderful director so and writer. So the way that, you know, what he gives them is really great to work with, but it still takes an amazing actor to be able to create a performance so exceptional around the already great story that they are given. I want to start off with Rana Dagubati, who of course plays Balala Deva, the villain uh, Amarendra Bahubali's brother in this film. And he does such an exceptional job. I truly hated him <laughs> by the end of the movie and um, he seems like a really nice pleasant guy in real life and I've seen a few clips of him from other films like you know from like songs or trailers and stuff and he very clearly is playing a different person. <laughs> um, so he's not like he's not always a villain but in this role he embodies that character so just so well I really the whole time like anytime he was on screen making an expression or doing anything I was like oh my gosh I hate you you're so good um, and it just created for such a fun uh, environment watching it because I just truly was I was thinking about his character exactly what they wanted me to think about him then going off of that the other characters around him how they all play off each other is phenomenal so you have of course um, Anushka Shetty who plays Devasena who is Amarendra's wife slash Mahendra's mother um, and she is uh, Anushka Shetty is just phenomenal oh my gosh so of course whenever we're introduced to her she is in chains and she's like very weak um, or she's supposed to be very weak you know she's like very frail like dying almost because she's had these horrible conditions for the last 25 years however even with that she has this silent strength about her like there's never a moment where you look at her and you're like she's weak despite the fact that that's what Bala Deva wants you to think. And I think that those subtleties in her performance from Anushka of just, I mean, it just says a lot about her abilities that she's able to in these, she doesn't even talk and you can feel the power coming off of her. And then whenever she does talk, you're like, holy crap, you're amazing as well. <laughs> and there's so many moments with working with cinematography and framing, like there's the time whenever, like we don't really see her face a lot and her hair is blocking and then Katapa who's played by uh, Satyaraj comes up and like is talking to her and like you see a slight wind where you can barely see her face and then whenever she gives her big dialogue 
and the wind blows and you can see her full face and the full rage inside of her and the power and the strength. And you feel that moment because there's been this build up, you know, you get a little peek and there's been this like this slow build up to it. And whenever it's full fledged, you see her, you know, and it's just, it's so powerful. And it's such an amazing moment in the film that was made by her wonderful performance. And then also Satya Raj does a great job as Katapa. <laughs> I'm not going to go into everyone who did a great job because it would take all day. Um, <laughs> but I want to talk a little bit more. So we also, of course, then quickly, let's talk about Prabhas. He does great. I mean, come on. He's perfect for the role. Uh, there's so many moments like he has that great smile. He's so charming. Um, but then he's also a total like tough guy <laughs> and he feels like a ruler. He has that regal feel to him as he stands there um, in front of his people like here he sits, you know. There's never a moment where I don't believe that he is Bahubali. And there's also I feel like some slight differences between the father and son. They are extremely similar in their personality as well as looks. Um, <laughs> but no. And so, but uh, there are a few like subtle differences between the two of them that I really appreciate. Amar and the Bahubali grew up in the castle, so he has a bit more of a, he's very instantly regal, while Mah Mahendra, his son, grew up in a village, so he's a little less regal to begin with, but he still has this air to him because that's his birthright, so I think it's inside of him still, and then once he learns the story, you can see it break out, and then he becomes closer to his father. It's not, it's like not an abrupt change, it's a very like subtle, it makes sense, and also it feels subtle because we've just spent so long watching his father. I have two more I want to talk about, one of them, I'm going to do a break and then I'll come back to the last one because I have a few other things I want to talk about around her. Um, but firstly, Tamina as Avantika, who is of course the son's love interest. So she's in the present time and she's part of this rebellion group who's trying to save Devasena from uh, Baladeva. And so she is has these amazing close-ups that they have where she just looks so fierce. Like you can see the energy and the passion and the rage inside of her as she thinks about freeing her queen. And like doing extreme close-ups of someone when they're supposed to be showing such an intense emotion can really go against a movie if the actor is not quite to the level it needs to be. And Tamina here proves that she can do that flawlessly. There are so many times where we get that and it's every single time it hits you. It's such a, you, you can feel the energy coming off of her. But <laughs> while we're on the topic of Avantika, I do want to quickly say my least favorite thing about the entirety of these two films. So the relationship between Mahendra Bahubali and Ivantika is underdeveloped. Simple as that. Um, the song that they have is nice. I do wish there was a different way they could have shown that she's beautiful without making her be the stereotype of what is beautiful. Um, I wish they could have left her in her warrior gear and shown that she was beautiful, but in order to do that, they would have had to then develop the relationship and create, like they would have had to add at least like 30 more minutes onto the movie if they wanted to do it effectively in a different way. Uh, the way that they did it in the song was honestly one of the easiest ways and it is very effective. It shows you exactly the message that they're going for, but I do just wish that it could have maybe been that she's still beautiful even though she's in her warrior gear and doesn't look like a traditional woman. Um, she's still beautiful just the way she is. Would have been a nice message, but <laughs> the film has so many amazingly strong females, including her, that I'm not upset about it at all. Like, I definitely don't think it's like bad or anything. Um, but when compared to how well done the rest of the movie is, it feels a little rushed. Where would they have put it in? They really would have had to add 30 more minutes onto the movie if they wanted to do this in any other way. And I fully understand that's not always a possibility. While that may be more of a commentary on how strong the rest of the film is, um, that it makes that scene look more weak. If you took it out of the movie and didn't compare it to the rest, it still would be an underdeveloped relationship. But whenever you insert it in and you're able to look at it, you see that there wasn't really time for them to do anything more with it. So I'm not too upset about it, but I do think that it's important to just note that that was the weakest part of the entire movie. I'll also quickly mention that Ramya Krishnan as uh, Sivagami is just... I'm gonna talk a bit about more her later because I have a few other things I want to say about the character, so let's wait till then, but... Amazing. All right, so now let's go on into the music. So M.M. Caravani, of course, did the music for both films. He works with Rajamuli quite a lot, um, and he is so good. <laughs> the background music for the movie is absolutely 
perfect. It fits everything so well. It sets the mood. Um, it builds so much onto it and it just, ah, it makes everything so good. Like those intermission scenes, the way that they, both of them have great intermissions, which I'm so sick of like places cutting out the intermissions. Like I, I watched the second one on Netflix to Mill and it cut off the intermission early. So it like feel, it makes it feel rushed and that's not how it's supposed to be. You're supposed to have this moment to hold on to for a bit as you pause or you just stare at the word intermission for a bit. You're holding on to that big impact before it jumps into the next bit, but they just cut it out. And so it makes that final scene of the inter before intermission lose its impact just slightly because you have to immediately go into the next part. You don't have those moments to soak in the bigness of it, especially in the first movie where they have the iconic two statues. Like it's beautiful and it's such a great metaphor. And you lose some of that if you cut too quick and they do it, they cut too quick. So that's just a pet peeve with, I don't know why they do that. Like Prime does it, Netflix does it, a lot of places do it and it really, irks me because that's not how you're supposed to watch the movie just leave it in it's like a few extra seconds and it improves your movie experience but yeah the background music score um in those moments were still really impactful and strong and every character had like a slight theme for them you could hear at different moments and they were all gorgeous and they all worked with the background music just so beautifully and then the songs themselves i love hamsa nava is probably my favorite of all the songs. Um, it was interesting to hear it in the Tamil because I didn't realize how well I knew the flow of the words from the Telugu version. I don't have the words memorized fully or anything, but like the opening line I can like hear in my head and the Tamil one's just like slightly different. So it was just slightly weird the whole time. Um, it just felt a little off, but it was still really beautiful in Tamil. And I have, of course, heard all the songs in Telugu through video songs and such. So I know what they're supposed to sound like. So I don't think I lost anything there, but it was just interesting to hear the subtle differences in the music, or not in the music, but in the lyrics of the song. The music, it goes through and it helps to um, create these great transitions between scenes and it always has these build build moments. It's also subtle in the background. Um, and it's just every moment uh, amplified by the score behind it, um, both in the actual songs and also the regular scenes that are happening with the score behind them. It just they're truly made even better because of the score. There's one subtle thing, I did not notice this. Sri told me about it and his dad had told him. So this is through the grapevine, but you can hear it once you know. Um, there's a scene near the end of Bahubali, the beginning, where they use the instrumentals from like the main song from the conclusion. Um, you can hear it, if you listen, you can hear. It is a very like subtle thing. They use it slightly in the background. So if you never rewatch the first one, you probably never would know that they use the same song. Um, but it's a really great way to, once you're rewatching it in the future, or if you're watching them right in a row, to connect the two movies, even in just that such a subtle way in your head. Even Because even if you don't recognize it as the same song, you still would associate that scene with the next movie because it sounds similar. So your brain would be like, oh, those are connected. And so I love those little subtle things. And this movie has so many of those. I'm not gonna talk about all of them. We talk about a little bit more in the commentaries cause I'm like discussing as the movie goes on. But even then I don't pick up on all of them, I'm sure. Going into the editing of it all, the pacing of the story is exceptional. The only part that's rushed is, you know, the one scene we already talked about. We only discussed that more. Um, but even that is well edited for what it is. And the whole thing is just, the overall story is paced extremely well. The way that it's delivered with the present day to flashback, flashback present day, um, it all flows naturally together. So it's never jarring at any time. It all just works. And the use of close-ups is very effective with the amazingly talented cast that they have uh, to help show these real deep emotions as well as some beautiful wide shots to help establish the setting um, and also the vastness of certain situations. And then also in the fight sequences, there's some really great editing. The choreography of every fight was really well done. There's some cool moments in it. There's some, there's some really over the top moments that are really enjoyable to watch. A lot of the fight scenes, some of them are more serious. Like, you know, there's a few moments that are very serious during fight scenes, um, but overall, they're really fun fight scenes to watch in my opinion. Like they're these, they do such fantastical, wonderful things. And uh, seeing the brain work of Bahubali, both of them, as they try and find creative solutions to win the war whenever it's not always in their favor and the way that they're always able to do it. And it always 
is so creative and cool. And then the use of slow motion in the fight scenes was also very effective, where they slow down one thing, then speed it up, slow it back down, speed it up, uh, cut between shot, you know? And it all worked together to create a really seamless feeling fight, even whenever we're switching between like two different characters or three different characters um, in the different places that they're at on it, or even four different characters at some points. <laughs> and the way they're able to do that while key making it all feel cohesive and never, um, you're never unsure of what's going on. And that is extremely impressive in itself. It's not something that you would necessarily notice all the time because it's done so well. Because it's done so well just feels natural and feels like it all makes sense. But getting it to work like that in some of those big scale fights that they have, they have quite a few huge fights in this. And all of them work so cohesively and flow together in a way that is really hard to achieve and extremely impressive. All right, so if we're gonna talk about fight scenes though, I think this is a good segue into CGI. You all know what I'm gonna say. Okay, <laughs> so there's a lot of uh, visual effects in this movie. There are, because it is a fantasy, it's a very high fantasy film about this canon, and there's, so there's a lot of things in it that happen that are larger than life, and therefore it's not real, so you've got to use something fake to put it on screen. And sadly, very often in this movie, it also looks extremely fake. Most of the time, so it is such a creative and cool idea that it is like appreciable enough that you can look past the fact that it looks unreal because it's still engaging and interesting. So it never, I don't think it ever fully took me out of the movie. There'd be, it'd like slightly take me out a few times when I'd notice it, especially like if there's some rough green screen work. Like I remember during the sledding scene, <laughs> the green screen work on Prava uh, Tantamana is quite rough in that scene. Uh, you can really tell that they're just not sledding down a hill. And, but also how the heck are they supposed to slide down a hill behind, an, like in front of an avalanche? Like they're not gonna do that. So I understand that it is fake. And so I'm not really upset about that at all, but it's just something that I noticed a lot. No, it is still extremely impressive, especially whenever it comes to the sets. Those sets are probably the most ex impressive feat whenever it came to the visual effect. And I know that a lot of it, they did build stuff. Like they built a lot, but the entire kingdom was not built and still these wide shots of it were absolutely gorgeous. There was still some times where you could tell it was like a little fake looking, but it was still so beautiful that I, I really didn't care. <laughs> and, um, the biggest time that the CGI, I would say was an issue at all, which I put that in quotes because it was never really an issue, was during uh, the fight scenes. Um, <laughs> I, sorry, I was just picturing uh, Balo Deva's like chariot with the little thing on it. That just reminds me of like, I am just calling it a violent lawnmower. I don't know if there's a real name for it, but it, it's just like a really aggressive lawnmower, I feel like, but instead of cutting grass, you're cutting people. <laughs> so, you know, that's what makes it violent. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, that's just something that pops in my head anytime I see it. Uh, it's really cool and it's very effective and it's really like perfect for his character. Um, but for, that thought got into my head that it's just like a violent lawnmower and I can't get it out. Um, so you're welcome, everyone that's now in your head. Um, <laughs> but there were some uh, very obviously CGI moments in fights. Uh, I think the most notable and most well-known one it does come in the Bahubali 2, whenever they use the trees to fling themselves over the wall in their barrel. But I do have to say, I didn't notice this the first time I watched it, I don't think, where I forgot, because <laughs> when I was watching them move the barrels, not all of them make it, and there's this one scene where you see like two make it, and then there's one just hits the side of the wall and falls, and I wasn't expecting that, and I was like, oh my god, <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, there's like people dying in the movie, but it also made me have a lot more appreciation for it, because it was a little ridiculous, okay, like that would not work in real life. You would break your limbs on impact, it just, it's not a practical solution, but it works for the movie very well. And it, I think it fits the rules that we've established for this world. So I'm not like upset about it or anything. It does look quite uh, false, but I do like that it does have that tie in with when we were in the flashback with the dad and he like uses the trees to sling up the water. Um, there's a few little moments like that where something happens in the flashback or something just happens nearby and then it has like a parallel scene that makes sense with it. And I really enjoy that in the movie. Um, we're gonna talk about one more of those. That was one of my favorite moments in the film later whenever I talk about my favorite moments. So the CGI overall just didn't always look very realistic, but um, the use of it was still really interesting. So I don't think that that is necessarily a negative. I'm gonna call it one because it kind of is. If that all looked like it was realistic, that would be, that would make the movie insane. And so I think we're on to my favorite moments of the film. I don't normally do something like this, but I have just three moments in this film that really stuck out to me and I continually am thinking about because they were just so 
awesome. I love them so much. So this film has some amazing woman empowerment in it. And I love me, I mean, I love me a good strong hero, but I also love me a good strong heroine. And this film delivers on both. Because you of course have Rapas, who's extremely tough, strong. You have Katapa um, with his whole arc. Um, even Rana Dagobati, he's a villain, but he's extremely powerful and he's well, an extremely well-written villain. And so to then have these extremely strong females like Tamina, she's tough as hell. <laughs> and then you have Devasina and Sivagami, though, who I'm going to talk about more because they were just overall more developed than Avantika, sadly. Um, she's, Avantika's still great, as I talked about Tamina earlier. I mean, she did an exceptional job with the role and still brought this wonderful fire and intensity and strength to the character. But I feel uh, Devasena and Sivagami just had more time in the story to be able to fully develop. Sivagami. <laughs> uh, she has two of my three favorite moments, and then Devasena has the other. So first one is when we're officially introduced to Sivagami, because of course we saw her a bit at the very beginning. Um, whenever she's saving Mahendra, Bahubali, but then we bring her back to the flashback and here she, there's like some people are trying to like throw a coup and like, you know, go against the king and like another guy wants to take the throne, you know, it happens. And she comes in and <laughs> she's so cool. The way that she pulls out a knife, slits the guy's throat, holding her baby, then the baby starts crying so she drops the knife and comforts her baby and goes and she's double breastfeeding while giving a speech like... Ah, it was so good to watch. This this film has some of the best women I've ever seen in this kind of movie ever. Like, they're so strong and amazing. I just, and they're also flawed. Like, you know, Sivagami's not perfect. She makes bad choices, as we all know. That's the whole, you know, big whole conflict of the movie comes from some bad choices made by her. But that moment with her, that was just so cool. Like, I, I loved that so much. And then also, though, the other favorite scene with her is actually back at the beginning whenever we first are introduced. That whole opening sequence with her saving the baby is just such a beautiful way to start a film. And it's really just it throws you into the setting where first you have this woman and you don't know who she is you don't know why she's saving him and she is just so strong and her willpower is just like you know and so she turns to her gods to help her and she's holding the baby up and walking and it's such a beautiful picture that with the arm sticking out of the water holding the baby it's just absolutely gorgeous and then whenever they find the baby and then she just kind of goes away because it's it's really exceptionally well done and her character holds so much strength and beauty while it's just uh i love it <laughs> it gives me like chills her character it's just so well developed and then continuing on to devasena gee i mean anushka ah uh, uh, ramya and anushka they got me in this movie they're so good anushka as devasena the my favorite moment with her she has a lot of good moments uh <laughs> I love her mouth. Uh, whenever she's talking back to Sivagami, their their relationship with each other is one of my favorites. Their back and forths and everything. It's it's so good. Uh, my favorite moment with Devasena is during the final battle at the conclusion. Uh, so Rana Dagubati gets her again. Like he captures her again. She keeps getting captured. It's very upsetting. But so he's holding her and he has her foot, his foot on her face. And I was like, oh, this is the moment I truly hated him. This was like my big moment where I felt the hatred. And I was like, Rana, you're doing too good of a job at this bad guy. I hate you a lot right now. Um, <laughs> but no, I hate Balala Deva. Then whenever, of course, Devasena is doing the circles um, to with the fire uh, for Shiva or Siva. I'm not positive how to pronounce it. So then, of course, whenever Devasena is walking um, the rounds for Shiva with the fire before, you know, they get to the climactic end um, and the bridge is burning. And then his head from the statue rolls and she gets to walk over it. So it goes from him putting his foot on her head on the chariot to her walking over his head to continue on her path to his ultimate demise. Um, and I love that because... Uh, Bahubali, or Prabhas, the young one, could have easily killed him, but instead he just pins him in place and lets his mother have that moment that she deserved. <laughs> she deserved that moment, um, and it's just, it's really, really great. All right, so those are like my three favorite scenes. Opening baby, the Vigami slitting throat comforting baby, and then <laughs> Devasena walking over the statue of Baladeva's head. I do also want to say briefly the ending while it was perfect, that is where they should have ended. It did feel a touch abrupt. Um, it wasn't anything bad, but it just, it felt like 
oh, it's over now. I think maybe just because I wanted to keep watching more. Um, and so, but it did feel a little like, oh, oh, we're done now. There's no more. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I do think that that's not really a negative. It says more about the fact that I wanted to just keep watching this story and these characters that they've spent so long developing and making me care about. Um, so don't make me care so much about your characters, then I won't be as disappointed when it ends. Um, <laughs> but that's not really a weak point at all. It's just something that I noticed when I finished the movies, so I thought it worth mentioning. And I do, of course, have to mention one other scene, which is, of course, when Amarendra Bahubali dies. I was almost crying so much. Um, and then whenever it gets back to Sivagami and there's the moment with Katapa and her as he's telling her what actually happened and like the look on her face and everything. And Katapa is like, you can see the pain and it's so beautiful. It's so, so beautiful. Uh, I was almost crying. It was so emotional and so well done in the score. You know, it's just everything about it was, was just so Good. And I do appreciate the fact that we learned that it was Katapa, of course, in the first one, and then we get the whole backstory, because as there, you see the relationship between his father and Katapa grow. It's so beautiful, and their love for each other, and to see him be the one, ultimately, who kills him is just so heartbreaking for both characters. So that's the last thing we talk about with spoilers. Um, now we are on to overall thoughts. Hopefully this is where you skip to if you have not seen the movie. Because if not, you just, you got the movie ruined for you. I'm very sorry. Um, <laughs> I get warned though, so not too sorry. Um, anyways, my overall thoughts. I think that the story of it all is so compelling and strong and it builds around these beautiful characters that are acted and performed so exceptionally well that you cannot help but care about them by the end of the movie. And that allows for all these emotional highs to hit and feel intense and you can feel them as you're watching it. You can feel the anger, you can feel the sadness, and you can feel the joy, and you can feel the excitement. You can feel all those emotions by the end of it if you allow yourself to fully get immersed into this film, which it gives you all the tools it needs to do that. Rating this film was extremely difficult. And the shark rating's hard. Um, <laughs> this is why I started out not rating movies. And honestly, I might switch back to not rating movies. Tell me if you have opinions on that. So I've decided though, because there is so much between the two that impact each other and work together that I'm just gonna give one collective rating for the whole story of Bahubali. And that rating is indeed Great White. So I did really love both these movies, the second one more than the first, and they tell such a beautiful story, but they just weren't quite Megalodon for me because they just, I don't know, I can't place exactly why, but they just were not quite there for me. They were extremely well done and I still really, really enjoyed them. And maybe I'll change my mind as I think more about it. I don't know. But this is where I'm putting them right now. Um, I'm really debating getting rid of the shark reading system. Let me know if you have any thoughts on that in the comments down below. But we'll see, I'll make a decision on that later. All right, so that is all I have to say about Bahu Valley, the beginning and the conclusion. Please leave all of your comments down below. Uh, let me know all of your thoughts. Um, just, yeah, I'd love to talk about the movie more. All right, thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you enjoyed, feel free to hit that like button, subscribe, and check out our Patreon link in the description below. All right, thank you guys so, so much for watching, and I hope you all are staying safe out there and have an absolutely amazing day. Bye!